All right, here we go. Chapter one, getting ready. What you do do is we're going to look at the first example. Example one, substitute and evaluate when x equals four and y equals negative one. So what we're going to do is practice substitution and the form that you're required to follow when you practice substitution, such as the following. 5x plus 3, negative 2x plus 8y, and finally x minus 3y minus 9. So let's look at the first example. 5x plus 3, so you're to substitute x. Anytime you see x, you should substitute the number 4. So in this question, we have just an x here, so we're going to substitute the number 4. So you place an equal sign, and then you write 5, and in brackets, you put the number substituted for x and then plus 3. Then what you're to do is to evaluate. You can evaluate it by saying, all right, 5 times 4 is 20, following bed mass, plus 3, and then get the final answer. And we're going to talk about the form of this in just a second. So let's go through the substitution for the next one. Equals negative 2 times x, which is now 4. So we're going to see wherever we see an x, we place a 4. And wherever we see a y, we place a negative 1. So negative 2 times x is negative 2 times 4 plus 8 times y, which is now going to be negative 1. We plug these values in, and we get negative 8, and then minus, minus, or plus, sorry, plus negative 8, because 8 times negative 1. Or you could have written this as negative 8 minus 8. Either way, what you're seeing here is a double sign. The double signs become one sign, and these two signs would become minus. So you end up with negative 8 minus 8, which is negative 16. Let's go to the next one. Substituting x with 4, negative 3, is negative minus 3 is still there, then we're y, we're substituting negative 1, minus 9. All right, so we have 4 plus 3 minus 9, and the result will be negative 2. So let's look at the form of all of these and what the expectations are when it comes to forming a solution. First of all, we have to note that Okay, now that's too much information for you, so we're going to go step a couple of back. We're going to note the mathematical form. This is going to be very important for me to note all the different mathematical form. So I'm going to just go through them slowly with you so that you understand what I'm looking for. Use brackets when you substitute variables with numbers. That is crucial. So anytime you see bracket, you see a variable, and you replace it, notice that every time I replace it, I replaced it with a set of brackets. This is the, this information you need and to show me, to tell me that's how you're substituting. That will also form a correct solution, and this will also help make sure that I understand what you're doing as well, or any math teacher will understand what you're doing. The next part, that's the star. Okay, so green star for all of those. Those are the steps that involves using brackets. Next part, align the equal signs vertically. So look at, in the black arrow parts, you'll see here that all the equal signs are aligned vertically. We don't align them horizontally. We don't have this weird horizontal thing going on. They are aligned vertically. We're going downwards for our solution. That is important. And finally, the last part is to show some work. So in here, what I'm doing is showing you some work. Why is the work important? Well, I know that all of you could do 5 times 4 plus 3 in your head and give me 23. What happens if you gave me an answer of 22? But if you wrote 20 plus 3 and by accident you wrote 22, I can still give you some marks for writing 20 plus 3. So it's the idea that if you show me some work, I can give you some marks. If your answer is wrong, but everything else is correct. But if you go from here right to the answer and the answer turns out to be wrong, well, folks, that's where you could easily be penalized. All right, let's go to the next 
page. So this is something that you need to do for homework. And we're going to go to the next line. Example number two. Simplify the following expressions. So we have some algebraic statements here that we need to simplify and collect like terms. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, there's brackets here. So what we want to do is take this 3 and we want to multiply the 3 to everything on the inside. Once the bracket ends, we also end multiplying that 3 out. Then we go to the next set of brackets and we see this minus 2. This whole entire minus 2 gets multiplied into each and every single part of the bracket. And we do the same for the next part. This 8 goes to, into everything inside these brackets, just like that. Perfectly done. Once there's an end bracket, we close it off. And then we have plus 10x minus 5. So let's go through the first one so you can see what I mean. All right, so we take the 3 and it times it by x. And then we do a plus, and 3 times 2 is 6. Next step, we have the minus 2. We're going to multiply it to 4x. So we get negative 8x, and then we have the minus 2 with the minus 1, which turns into plus 2. So now we have this line. All the brackets are gone, so now we're going to look for like terms. The 3x can combine with the 8x to give us minus 5x. Why is it minus 5x? Because don't forget, it's 3x minus 8x. Then we have the 6 plus the 2, which will give us plus 8. All right, next one. We have 8x squared, and then we have the 8 times the minus 2x, which is minus 16x. There we go. We can see this. And then we have the 8 plus the 1, and that gives us plus 8. Then we have the plus 10x, and then the minus 5. So what we're going to do next on the next line is to collect any like terms. 8x squared goes first. Wonderful. Then we have the minus 16x plus 10x is going to give us minus 6x. And then plus 8 minus 5 is going to give us plus 3. Wonderful. So if we look at all of these, these are the following simplified expressions. So when expanding, remember to include the sign. So include the sign. In C part A, so this is the sign that we're talking about here. And collect like terms properly, C part B. And what I mean by that is that x squared can only be combined with other x squareds. It cannot be combined with things like x. So to keep that in mind when you're combining like terms. All right, next page, folks. Example number three. You're asked to graph the following lines using different methods. So, we have a couple of lines here that you're going to be exposed to, and we're going to be exposed to the graph, okay? So, here comes the graph. There we go. And we want to graph these. So, I'm going to expose you to the two types of main types of graphing we do in grade 10, but there is a third one called table of values, and we're not going to really use a table of values in this. So, let's keep that in mind. All right, just a moment. Okay, so... What we're looking at is how to do these. So, there are three ways to graph. The first way that we looked at for graphing is slope and y-intercept. You probably learned this in grade 9, so we're going to use that method to show you how to graph. Another way is to use the x and y-intercepts. Those are the two more common ways of being able to graph a line. The third way, which is a little more tedious and long-winded, is using a table of values. We're, I'm actually not going to show you that step, and you can use the internet to look for those that type of graphing. That is the least likely we're going to use to be able to graph lines in this course. So that's the one I'm going to avoid right now. All right, so y equals 5x plus 1. We want to graph that. Well, look at the form that it's in. Hopefully you notice that it's in the y equals mx plus b form. Logically, because it's already in that form and the numbers are nice, we probably want to use slope and y-intercept, and that's what I would recommend. So you're going to identify the slope, which is always the m value, which is 5 over 1. Now, how come I'm calling it 5 over 1? That 1 on the bottom has nothing to do with this one. This, it has to do with this number 5. m is always expressed as a fraction. Why? Why? Because m is the slope. Slope implies there is a rise 
over a run, a delta y over a delta x, which we can talk about in this course later on. So the idea is that there has to be two parts. To be able to follow a slope, you must have a rise over a run. So if the number is a whole number like this, you write the number as a fraction. So that is our m, and then we have our b. b stands for the y-intercept. Another way to look at b is where you begin. You're going to begin at the number 1. So what we need to do is, on the graph, we begin at the number 1, just like so. You'll see, you'll see a dot right here implying that we begin at the 1. And then you're going to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run to the right 1. So we're going to plot another dot in this spot right there. So again, I'll show you. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 1. Can we keep going? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, we can't go anymore. But folks, we can also go backwards. Now note that if this was a negative, okay, we would have to go uh, down. So we always rise according to the sign. So positive if it's up, negative if it's down, but we're always running to the right for the first one. Now we're going to go backwards. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and back one. And what that will do is look at this now, is we have more dots that we can plot. The reason why we want to plot these dots is that will allow us to give us a more accurate line as such. And this line has arrows at the end of each end, just as such, and each line has an equation, just like so. So this line, 5x plus 1, is the first line right here, y equals 5x plus 1. All right, I'm going to stop the video now and move to the next video so that we can continue these lines. All right, folks, see you on the other side.